Hi, I'm Joel Johnson from Orchard Partners, and this is a brief explanation of the option pricing method. The OPM is a method appraisers use to determine the value of common stock in a venture-backed company. Venture-backed companies are particularly challenging to value because they have two classes of equity securities, common stock and preferred stock. In this presentation, we'll briefly review the three methods for allocating equity value between common and preferred shares. Then we'll focus on the method appraisers prefer, which is the option pricing method. Rather than trying to explain the OPM with numbers and graphs, we're going to use the image of a bird and two trees. The bird represents the company's equity value today. The two trees represent possible future values for the equity. The shorter tree, let's say it's an oak, represents a lower value. At this low value, only the preferred liquidation preference is paid out. There's not sufficient equity value to pay the common as well. The higher tree, the pine, represents a higher value. At the higher value, the equity proceeds are sufficient to pay the common and the preferred. So the question is, where will the bird land? Will it land in the lower tree so that only the preferred has value? Or will it choose the pine, where value is high enough to make payments to the preferred and the common? The simplest of the three allocation methods is called the current value method. It assumes no difference between the equity value today and the future equity value. Most people agree this is not a very realistic assumption, and the current value method can be used only in very limited circumstances, either when the company is a coal startup or when a liquidity event is about to occur at a known value. The probability weighted expected returns method, which we'll call P-worm, assumes the equity value will change. Typically, an appraiser will consider four or more scenarios, such as going public, selling the company, or filing for bankruptcy. We show only two scenarios here. In the most optimistic scenarios, equity value is high enough for payouts to common and the preferred. In the pessimistic scenarios, only the preferred gets paid. A future value is estimated for each scenario. Each scenario is weighted according to its probability. Future value is discounted to present value. The value of the common stock is determined by the weighted average present value of these future scenarios. The option pricing method follows the same logic as the P-worm with a few key differences. First, instead of considering a handful of scenarios, the OPM considers a very large number of scenarios with only incremental differences between each one. In the P-worm, the risk associated with future scenarios is captured in two adjustments, the probability assigned to the scenario and the discount rate used to convert future value to present value. In the OPM, the probability weights do virtually all the work of adjusting for risk. The discount rate is less important. Finally, the P-worm and the OPM differ in the way they estimate probabilities. In the probability weighted method, each assessment of probability depends on the appraiser's judgment. In the OPM, the Black-Scholes model determines probabilities. The Black-Scholes model assumes that outcomes are normally distributed. The most likely future values are assumed to be relatively close to the value of the equity today. The model also considers values which are dramatically higher and lower than today's equity values, but the probability of these outcomes is assumed to be very low. As in the P-worm, the value of the common is a function of the probability weighted future outcomes. Two important inputs to the OPM are volatility and time to liquidity, which determines the life of the option. Most of us think of volatility as a measure of risk, and we associate higher risk with a lower value for the common stock. But in the OPM, the opposite is true. Higher volatility is associated with a higher value for the common stock. Here's why. The only thing that gives common stock value is the possibility of a payout at a high future equity value. As volatility increases, the downward swings get deeper, but the common shareholder doesn't care. From his perspective, zero is still zero. What's important is that the upward swings get higher. If volatility swings in a narrow range, 
The bird may land only in the lowest branches of the pine, even in the most optimistic scenarios. If greater volatility is assumed, the bird is more likely to land in a high branch, increasing the payout to common. Another important input to the OPM is the life of the option. If a short life is assumed, volatility does not have sufficient time to generate payouts at higher values. With a longer life, this prospect of a higher payout increases. In summary, the OPM and the P-worm estimate common value based on a range of future values which are weighted by probability. The OPM considers a larger number of outcomes than the probability weighted method and the probabilities are assumed to be normally distributed. Higher volatility and longer option lives increase the value of the common.